Hi, it's Chris and I'm based in the UK. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial video on how to deconstruct a painting. A big thank you to everyone who sent in photographs for me. I had a huge selection. It was lovely to see all these wonderful photos. So thank you so much for sending them in. Now this process of creating a painting, for me, it splits into roughly seven parts. Stage one is choosing a photo, stage two, the canvas size, stage three, deconstructing the photo. And this is what I'm going to be concentrating on today. Stage four is breaking down the colours and doing a thumbnail. Stage five is working out how many cups I want. And stage six is listing out all the colours and the split for each cup. And then stage seven is creating the painting. So stage one is choosing a photo. Now the photo I've chosen was sent to me by Luna. This is it. Thank you very much, Luna, for sending it to me. She said she took it, um, the photo, on the way back from va vacation. It was taken from inside a car. There was a storm coming. The colours in the sky were lovely, contrasting with this beautiful yellow. You can see there's a reflection because it was taken from inside the car. It doesn't matter. Your photo reference doesn't have to be perfect. It has to jog your memory of that time when you were taking the photo. Obviously, you need um, to be able to see the actual colour split and it needs to be in fo relatively in focus, but it doesn't have to be a perfect composition photo. It's just the photo is just a reference point. Why did I choose this photo? If you're creating a painting, it's got to be on a subject you like. I love the contrast on this photo. I love the dark sky. I like the flash of yellow here. So the photo appealed to me. And also I knew this photo was going to work really well for this tutorial video. Doesn't mean the other photos I didn't like. There were some real stunners there, but I just thought this is going to best represent what I wanted to show you in the tutorial and also I love the photo. When I'm choosing a photo it has to appeal to me. I'm making a painting from it. It doesn't matter if there's loads of details on here that I don't want. It's a starting point. Paintings I'm creating, my abstracted landscapes, are all about mood and feeling. So I'm not looking for big details and I would miss out um, big details. If I had a photo which was quite complicated, I would split it down into its basic elements and that's what I would create. So stage two is choosing the size of canvas. So you've got your photo and now you're going to have to think about how you want to um, represent it in a painting. This can be driven by what actual canvases you've got. So I could do it on a kind of landscape and pretty much match the photo um, composition or I can take a sliver of it. I like using the 20 by 50 canvases, this kind of hat canvas. Now I could have it like that but I'm going to have it portrait. So this means I'm going to be using a sliver of this photograph. Now when I look at the, this in more detail I really love this area of lightness here in the sky and then you've got the dark clouds. However, also like this section. So I'm going to combine these two sections in the painting. You could use two photographs and bring them together. It's your painting, you do what you want. So I'm going to be looking at this area. I've drawn this out long and thin because it kind of matches my um, canvas. But I'm also going to be looking at this sky. I also quite like this section here of the yellow. So I'm going to combine them all. So what I'm going to start doing is splitting this into areas. Now I know there's a section here. Dark section here, a lighter section here. And then I've got all this sky. That's a darker section. And then you've got almost two sections here. This lighter section and then a darker section. 
on the yellow part, this top area here is brighter. That's because it's sitting next to this darkness. But I'm going to split that into two. So you can see I'm starting to break down the actual photograph. I'm combining this section. I'm going to put that in here. And I've got this layer of darkness here. Now I know from experience with my acrylic pouring that if I want to do a kind of detailed area like this, if I try and pour this dark colour, it could spread. It could take over the painting. So what I may do is add this section afterwards. But I may pour the whole thing and decide not to add it. It gives me that flexibility. But I know if I put a cup on here with that darkness in, it may just spread too much. So I'm not going to actually represent this section on my breakdown. So at the moment, I've got one, two, three. I've put three there as well. Four, five, six. So I've got roughly six areas of different um, colours. Now, you also have to decide what kind of technique you're using. I'm going to be doing flip cups. You could do um, flip cups and then perhaps swipe this bottom bit to create those in more detail. But I'm going to do this in its simplest form. I'm going to do all flip cups at the same time. For me, it's all about the bands of colour. That's what appeals to me in my paintings. If there was a tree here, I would just ignore it. I would take it out of the equation. Obviously, I could add a tree afterwards, but I'm looking at this background, this section, those colours that make up that area. So I just ignore the bits that I don't want to use. This has got fence posts in it. I'm not going to even reference them. I could paint them in later if I wanted, but that's not what concerns me. It's the these bands that I'm working from. Okay, stage four, the thumbnail. That, now, this is a thumbnail. <laughs> this is my version of a thumbnail. I'm roughly drawing the canvas here. Long, narrow portrait. I haven't measured it, I've just drawn it out. And I'm going to start transferring the information on here onto this one. So I've got a one and a two, one, two. Do you have a band of black here? And for my reference, may add once dry. Okay, and then I've got this lighter section, light, sky, and then I've got this three sections here, dark sky, light sky, and I'm going to call that mid sky. When I'm thinking about the composition of my paintings, if I had, um, that's my horizon line here. If I put my horizon line dead in the middle of the canvas, it's going to split the canvas in half. I don't like that, so I always work in thirds. So I have to decide whether I want the sky to be the star of the show or the land part. If I want that land part to be the star of the show, I would put more cups here and more details and then only have a small part of the sky. But I've decided that all this is going to be sky. And then this lower part, land. So that's two thirds sky, one third land. That's how I'm going to weight it. So now I'm going to start looking at the colors that are in these sections. So I, it's yellows, and greens, bright yellows, and green, a small bit of green. This light, so it's light sky. And then darks, dark skies, light, 
light, straight, dark. One, two, three, four, five, six. That matches those. So I'll look at the colours in here and start thinking about what colours I'm going to use. If I'm going to mix colours, if I'm going to use um, totally different colours, if I'm going to be like really abstract, I'll start breaking these down. I have a look at what yellows I've got, what kind of yellow it is. It's a very bright yellow. You want some contrast in there. I always put some contrasts in there. This one's got more green in, so I'll put some greens. And this is how I start building the colours. So this is my canvas. Obviously, it's going to be portrait, but to show on this camera, I've got it sideways. So I'm going to start thinking about my cups. I know I've got six sections, so therefore I could quite easily use six cups. The yellow section is going to be in the lower third, which is roughly here, and the sky section in that third. So I've got two cups, so I have different size cups, and I know they take different amounts of paint. That's 20 millilitres of paint. I've got a 30, just grab my 35s. I've got 50s as well. Also have larger cups whole range of cups they're all plastic so this is what I'm going to start using to build my my sections now I use a formula to work out how much paint covers the canvas this formula works for me because my paints relatively it's not massively thin it's not too thick and I it gives me a place to work from so the canvas is 50 centimeters by 20. So I times those together to get the surface area, which is a thousand centimeters squared. Then I times this amount by 0.22, and this gives me how many milliliters of paint. So for this particular canvas, I know it's 220 milliliters. That yellow section here is larger than that smaller section. If you think about it, when things go into distance, they recede. So I'm going to start thinking about what cuts. It might be easier to start from the sky part. Okay, got a huge area here. So I could just put three cups to represent the sky. A smaller cup to represent that small part of the um, sky, light sky. To represent the land, I could have two cups out of 50. But I know this band of yellow I want wider. So I could make this cup smaller. This cup for the small part of sky could make smaller and I'm starting to roughly balance my composition. That's roughly the right split that I want for this painting. Listing what cups I'm going to be used. Also when I do the stage before working out the cups, if I was going to swipe this part, lower part, I wouldn't need that cup. So it depends on what technique you're going to use, but I know these are all going to be flip cups tilted at the same time, six cups. And I know that this section is going to be sky, this section land. So this is going to be mid, light, dark, light, bright, land, green, yellow, land. Okay, so there's my cups. And now I'm going to work out what colours I'm going to put in each cup and the order. So going back to my photo, I've got to start thinking about these colours. Now this sky has kind of got a greeny grey tone because it's a storm. So you could just do blues. You could use colours straight out of your um, tubes, but I'm going to mix these colours for the sky. This is going to be a range of yellow, so I, I can start thinking about um, what colours I'm going to be using. And I know I'm going to custom mix the sky. Now I've already done that. So I've based my colours around the sky blue light. I've desaturated it with some orange to get a kind of greeny grey colour. And I've got that's a mid-tone version of that, a darker tone of that, 
and an even darker and then I've gone a lighter tone yeah that's the original sky blue here and these are all variations of that color I've either added orange to desaturate and to make it more neutral the reason why I've used orange is orange is the complementary color of blue so it would start to desaturate it and turn it to gray depending on how much you put in you can see it's darker I've used various different colors to darken this as well but they're all based on this sky blue light it's got four versions of that I can even use a bit of the sky blue light in there as well so my sky is going to be made up of these colors for the land part I'm looking at I'm not mixing up my yellows custom mixing my yellows I'm using one I've got in the bottle so I've got a primary yellow a Venice yellow um, an Azo yellow and a yellow ochre I've also got these greens which I'm used very sparingly as well so in this section I know it's going to be green yellow so I'm going to be putting some of the when I list out my colors some of the greens and some of the yellows and I'll work all the way through the different sections with the colors that I've got I've done a video on this on how I layer my cups so I'm going to um, put a link up for that so you can see what I'm talking about Luna because she sent me the photo she's going to have access to a video where I show all this information about how I actually split my cups how I'm going to be layering the colors so if she wants to create her own version of of the painting she knows exactly what I've done and that's a thank you to her for supplying me the photo I also on this video also there will be me actually layering the cups so she can see what I've done. Flipping time. Oh, splurger. Good, 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 good luck guys. I did run out of some of our, the colours that I had pre-mixed. So it might be slightly different than what I was planning, but there you go. Okay, so this one's going to, these are going to splurge nicely. Look at that. And look at the primary yellow going for it, okay? That's because it's less dense than the other paints and it's just forming happy shapes there. <sighs> That's a lighter area. Wow, beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna use these cups to do the sides. I took that way first and then back this way. I ran out of the custom mix colour I used there but I wanted to keep going rather than stop everything so what I will most probably do is just tone down this blue in here to match more of this kind of uh, colour here I most probably straighten horizon line and when I do that I'll put the darker section in there representing those um, trees at the bottom while the painting was still wet, I added some more um, details into the land part and I also put the dark horizon line at the top. Right, this is dried and I wanted to show you this before I did any changes because this is the a very basic deconstruction of this. 
all depends on what techniques you use to create the paintings but this shows you just a very simple basic flip cup all tilted at the same time and the results this color here is my mistake i didn't mix enough of this lighter color here so what i'm going to do is layer wash over here and i'm going to get rid of this splurge here so this is straight i may change the line of the trees as well i am going to put some um, uprights in this part to symbolize those bits here and i'm just going to brighten some of this area here you see that's such a vivid yellow against the darkness of the trees there Here's the final piece, and you can see some of the textures I added in the bottom to create the grasses, and I've brightened the yellows, and not that, that very bright blue just above the trees, and added more details into the trees, so I'm really pleased with how it's turned out. So here's a direct comparison between the original photo from Luna and my interpretation of it. You can see I've added more blue into the sky, and if I was doing this again, I would actually do the sky differently, but I wanted to keep the technique really simple so you could see my thinking behind how I deconstruct a photo. I do hope you found this tutorial video of use. And if you have any questions, drop me a comment. And also, I really welcome your feedback. I put a lot of time in putting this tutorial video together, so it would be great to hear what you thought of it. Do take care and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.